So most of the stuff that has come through here, and I'm going to actually switch over onto Android because clearly I am in a broken state. Let's put this back to where it's supposed to be. Take a look at it. Come on. Commenting code is not hard. So deployed to my pixel. So a lot of the kind of the smaller improvements, if you go through the Xamarin Forms release notes, are all about trying to improve um, the development cycle. This whole idea of I have to make code changes, I have to compile, I have to deploy to my emulator or device, I have to test them, I have to realize, oh crap, I made a mistake, let's go back and fix it, do it again. That takes a lot of time. And especially on mobile, you'll, you'll watch what an Android build can do especially one that's probably going from a clean state, it can take a while. Now, this isn't necessarily a great high-end machine as a good example of performance. I'd say average, maybe a little lower. But it can take a while to actually do that full deployment out. Okay? And some of it is not necessarily in Microsoft's control. They're using the native tool chain under the hood, just like you would if you were building this with Android Studio or Xcode. So some of the performance problems aren't necessarily something that's inside of their control. But what Xamarin said is, okay, well, you know, we may not necessarily have control of the whole tool chain that we, that we can go through and fix the build speed, but we can cut down on this development loop. What if we didn't have to actually go through and stop debugging? What if we could just make edits and see them launch right inside of our emulator or simulator? What if I can make edits right inside my app as it's running on the phone and see those changes come up? So that's what they went through and did. So let's take a look at this. So, so this is uh, a preview feature. So from inside of your Visual Studio, tools, options, underneath the Xamarin, there's this Xamarin hot reload. And the key word here is preview. So it works pretty well. It also falls over a lot. So just be aware of that. But we can come in here and let's, come on Android, go out, I, I know. Querying a web service is hard. I promise it'll work. Did my Azure query really time out? It's a memory store. Uh, let's just jump over here, so the, the items page. And you go ahead and think about what you've done. So inside of our XAML, this whole idea of having to wait and while that thing's thinking, we're going to go ahead and just switch over here. And we're going to launch up. Let's do the Android side of things if we can, because I hopefully this guy connects. So what you aren't seeing is I don't have a Mac sitting here. I've got a Mac hiding over in the corner over there, but I, it's not plugged into any monitors. I'm running this thing headless. You saw the, the Mac simulator here. This runs on Windows. I don't have to actually physically connect to a Mac. You need a Mac to be able to compile an iOS app. There's no way around that. Apple ensures it. But there's no reason that you have to have a Mac that you're actually doing your development on. If you like your Visual Studio environment, you've got your tools and your tool chain set up there, great, keep using it. This is the way I end up building my iOS apps. I like Visual Studio on Windows. Setting up the renderer, it's thinking about what it's supposed to do. So inside of the XAML, one of the other small features that they went through and added is this idea of design time data. And there we go, finally. So on the right here, I'm getting a preview of what is my items page going to look like. So from the actual app, you'll notice this doesn't include the shell stuff. And why am I getting notifications from Teams? Teams needs to be off immediately. It's just the inside portion of my shell, just the content of my page. And you'll notice inside of this uh, design preview, it's getting close-ish. Like if we look at it, we'll notice, okay, well, it's kind of got the relative font sizes pretty close. It's missing on the colors. This design preview is, is one of the things that they, that they added to try and make it quick and easy for you to develop. But you'll notice it's also showing different content. So inside of Xamarin Forms, and this is different than um, all of the other XAML frameworks, is you can go through and put design time data on any property you want. It doesn't have to be tied to just item source or uh, data context or pre-populated stuff. I can go through and say, my item source, I'm just going to populate this with a bunch of strings, which is what we see here. I can come in on my label and I can say, you know what? 
When I'm in design mode, we're not going to deal with the actual object behind the scenes. I just want that string directly. For design mode, I want my text color to be red because reasons. And I get a nice preview. Now, this is important to note, this is a preview. This is not reflective of what your app will actually look like at runtime. It's a best guess, OK? Because you'll note that this text color, even before my preview one, didn't quite work. Because when you have resources and things that it has to go and look up, it's only looking at this one page. It can't necessarily go and resolve this context of what this page is ultimately going to look like at runtime, OK? Now, if we can get this thing to play nice, let's just jump over to the About page and see if, see if we can get this guy to actually demo the way I want. So let's come down here, and I'm just going to pick on this label. So that con uh, comment before about the hot reload, let's do uh, text color, because that's an easy one to see happen. I make a change. I see it running. For people who have worked in things like UWP and WPF, this is like, finally, this is what we've had for a while now. But this is now in Xamarin Forms. And this also works on your actual devices, not just on your simulators and emulators. There's a, a docs page where you do need to go through and make sure that you actually have all of the prerequisites. There's minimum Android and iOS versions. There's minimum Visual Studio versions. If you're running the latest stuff, targeting recently new hardware, you're fine. But it does let you go through and start making changes. And obviously, there are changes I can make in my XAML here that aren't going to be able to be propagated forward. Things like if you register up a click handler, that's not going to automatically start working for you across. You're going to actually have to stop, recompile, and push out. But if you're looking to go through and do it, I tend to not like the XAML previewer at all and much prefer this. I don't want a best guess of what my app might look like at runtime. I want to see what it is looking like at runtime. Yeah. Does it also take into account changes to data binding? The answer is kind of. It depends on what the changes are. So if it's, oh, I, I didn't actually get my property name correct. Let me fix that in the XAML. Sure. If it's, oh, no, I need to change this. The moment you start touching anything that has to do with the C sharp or the generated code behind, it's probably not going to work. Okay? This is mostly just XAML layout stuff. And certain amounts of additions and deletions are also going to cause it to just give up. Correct, yeah, things, binding handlers, those types of things, it's going to start to fall over. It's also important to note that your incremental changes that are being hot reloaded, you should probably always relaunch your app one more time because those incremental steps that got you to a particular result may not be the same as the co code that you've now written that's all the way there, okay? Because it is possible to do incremental changes that, are, that leave you in a different state than what the code is actually saying. 